One of the universal truths of computers is that when you use it, sometimes something is going to go wrong. It's just kind of the way things work. And that's even more true on Linux, where people tend to tinker just a little bit more than they do on Windows or Mac. You know, we as nerds tend to get into our operating systems and, you know, customize them and change things and script things and sometimes things just work and even if you're not looking at the operating system itself and you're looking at an application sometimes things just break for no apparent reason you've made a change somewhere along the line and that change is not something that the program agrees with and it doesn't work you know either it doesn't work properly or it doesn't work at all so the question is what do you do what happens when things go wrong and you need to fix them now i've talked about how to troubleshoot on linux before and i've talked about the logs that linux makes before because linux logs everything that it does and it puts them all in one directory the problem with that isn't that you know that is particularly hard going in and looking for those things it just can be really tedious because there are a ton of different logs so there's actually a better way to do it. And this is the tip and trick I'm going to give you for today. So let's just say, for example, you're in DWM and you have a status bar up there and it looks really nice. The problem is, is nothing showing up. So let's just show you that exact problem. So that's what's going on here. Now, as you can see up here in the bar, I have a whole bunch of stuff up here, but it all says not available. Like what the hell is going on? And I have actually no clue what's going on because it should be working. Everything's set up exactly the way it should be, but it's not working. So what do I do? Well, I could go find a log somewhere because chances are the errors that are being spit out there are being put somewhere. I could go spelunking into the logs directory and maybe find that. Or maybe it's in the uh, X session errors file. I don't know. But there is an easier way, like I said. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And the first thing you want to do when you discover a problem that you're having with an application or a script or something is kill it. If it's running in the background, you want to make sure it's dead. So in my, my situation, I'm going to use kill all SL status because that's the issue that I'm having up there in the bar. And I enter. And if I've done it right, it should go away. That means it's dead. Okay, we've killed it. It is no longer running. It's fantastic. Now... I could restart DWM and have it come back up. In fact, I will show you exactly that. And as you can see, the problem came right back, right? That's just, you know, that's that was one option that I had to troubleshoot. Maybe it's just it didn't load. So it, by reloading DWM, I was able to see if that fixed the problem. But it didn't. So I'm going to kill SL status again. Now... Here's the trick. So the best way to find out what's going wrong with any program that's, you know, causing you issues is either to look for logs or run it in the terminal. Every application that you can pretty much conceive of can be run from the terminal in some form or fashion. Now, obviously, there are going to be some exceptions to this. They have to be executable and all that stuff, right? But for the most part, if you're talking about an application or something like that, you can run it from the terminal, even if you don't think that it can be run from the terminal. So for example, Firefox. If you're having problems with Firefox, you can launch it from the terminal and what it will do is it will tell you every single thing that it's doing, including the things that it's doing wrong. Even if it doesn't run, you know, at all, it will still spit something out. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just run SL status from the terminal and you're going to see it's up there again and lo and behold, I have icons now. Uh, and this is where I'm going to have to kind of divert in my troubleshooting journey because I have actually no idea why the icons are showing up when I run it from the terminal, but not when I run it just, you know, normally. It doesn't make any sense to me. That's something that I'm going to have to figure out later. Now, I'm, as you can see in the terminal here, this is what really matters for the video, is that it is spitting out errors. And it's telling me exactly some of the things that are going wrong with the script. Now, it's not obviously all of them because I'm having some problems where the icons aren't showing up normally, but they are now, so that's really weird. But somewhere in my SL status config, I have some paths there that it's looking for, and those things don't exist yet, and that's just because I haven't gotten around to creating them. So eventually I'll get those created, and then the errors will go, wrong, go, you know, go away. So no matter what application you're using, if you're having problems with it, run it from the terminal because what it's going to do is it's going to spit out something like this. It will probably even be more than this, just in these four lines repeating over and over and over again, but it will repeat the stuff that's going wrong somewhere in that gibberish that is that is putting out. And 
90% of your problem when you're troubleshooting is figuring out what the problem is. Once you know what the problem is, it's very easily, it's very easy usually to go solve it. So whenever you're having an issue, run the program from the terminal. Now, I know a lot of people are scared of the terminal, and this looks like gibberish to a lot of people, but this is actually a fairly simple problem, at least for those missing directories. But no matter what the problem is, as long as you know what it is, you can probably go Google what the solution is. And that's why 90% of the problem, or 90% of the journey, I should say, is knowing what the problem is. So, that's the tip and trick. There's really not much more to it. And... This is one of those things where you'd expect to see this tip online in more places. Because this is obviously something that's been around for a very, very long time. And if you are a long-time Linux user, you probably know exactly this trick. But some people who have either just switched to Linux or maybe you don't have problems all that often, maybe you didn't know this. So hopefully it helped you. If you have comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Libre Pay and YouTube will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel will not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.